Welcome to Rock Creek Online. Thank you for joining us today. In just a moment, we're gonna hear a great talk, but first, take a minute and let us know where you're watching from. As you watch today, we want you to know that we've been praying for you, and we believe God is going to speak to you through today's teaching. Just a reminder, if you're ever in the Marysville area, we would love for you to join in person for church. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy today's teaching. Thank you for making Rock Creek a part of your spiritual growth. Hey, Rock Creek Church, Pastor Brian here. We're so glad you joined us. Wherever you're watching from, uh, whether it's our social media, Facebook, uh, whether it's our YouTube channel or our website. Hey, if you're watching on social, just let us know where you're watching from, who's watching with you. Make sure to take a minute, download the notes, print them off. It'll help you this week. If you forget what I said, you can go back and revisit it and so you can actually walk out the biblical principles I'm going to share with you today. But before we get to the talk, I want to just give you a little heads up of what's coming up as a church. And one of our favorite times of the year is summertime. And so in Rock Creek Kids, uh, we're having a summer kickoff on June 12th. In both services, there's going to be giveaways, special surprises, kind of our big uh, party end of the year. Summer's kicking off. School's officially out. I know parents, you're in mourning, uh, but the kids are excited. And so it's one of the greatest weekends uh, of the year in our kids ministry. And so if you're in the area near our facilities, join us at 9 or 1030 as we kick off the summer. Also, my favorite holiday besides Mother's Day is Father's Day. And uh, that's going to be an amazing time together as we celebrate all the dads. So whether you're a, a papa, a grandfather, a granddad, a daddy, a dad, like invite, show up to our, our in-person services. Uh, we're going to be doing some special giveaways. Uh, I, okay, I'll tell you what it is. Just because you're watching today, it's called the Grill Blazer. And the Grill Blazer is one of the greatest inventions ever to be made. And it's a, basically a, a, a gun that shoots fire to start your charcoal. And we're giving away a couple of those in each service. And so join us in person. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I, here, here's the money back guarantee. I will encourage you, not discourage you. So if you're a dad, I know a lot of times you don't want to be in church because you think I'm just going to get smashed by the preacher. Well, that weekend, I'm going to encourage all the fathers, and so join me in person, 9 and 10.30, June 19th. It's going to be an awesome time together, and we're going to have some fun as well. We'll see you there. Okay, we're in this teaching series called Life, and we subtitled it, Fake It or Fix It. Here, here's what we think, okay? A lot of people in life fake their life. They, they act like it's good. They act like they're you know, too blessed to be stressed. Everything is perfect. We see their perfect families and pictures and vacations on social media and as we talk. And, but the reality is once you get to know some people, you realize actually it's, it's not real. It's fake. And so our whole goal of this entire teaching series is that we would come to the realization we need to stop faking life and let the Spirit of God, the same Spirit who raised Christ from the dead, fix what's broken on the inside. And so we've been tackling some tough subjects like anger and stress, and, and some of you have found some amazing freedom, some of you not yet. Well, today is your day, because I'm talking about one of these subjects that a lot of people don't like to talk about, because it brings up some stuff that you gotta deal with, but it's good. And so today's Freedom Talk is about forgiveness. So let's get to our theme scripture. John 10.10 10 says, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. But my purpose, Jesus says, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Now here's the truth. There's an enemy of our soul, the thief. We all know him as Satan or the, or the devil. You may not believe in him, but he believes in you. His whole goal is to get your life to make no eternal impact for the kingdom of God, to delay, discourage, and ultimately destroy what God wants to do. But Jesus says, actually, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna give you a, a purpose to live for that's rich, not rich in the sense of money, although that would be nice, rich in the sense of robust, overflowing, joy-filled, hopeful, and it's gonna satisfy everything in your life. I don't know about you, but, but, but that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. And so this is our whole goal today as we talk about forgiveness and the biblical principles that we need to apply to our life in this particular area. We need to stop faking it and allow the Spirit of God to fix it so that we can actually, what, live with purpose, to have a rich and satisfying life, not a life that's being destroyed and killed and stolen from. And so as you'll discover today, or we'll, together we'll discover, like, there is a serious moment where we must realize that, that unforgiveness has, has detrimental effects 
in our life. I, I wanna illustrate it with, with a story. Growing up, I would go and work for my grandparents' company and they owned a commercial floor covering company and they had this massive warehouse and so at a young age, we were cruising around the forklifts in the back room, moving tile and carpet and, and it was awesome. I loved it as a kid. We'd go in with my grandparents and just have a lot of fun and my grandpa was kind of this, this larger than life figure and so we would go out there and he would let us kind of do whatever we weren't supposed to but mom and dad weren't watching so it was okay, right? And so whether it's using power saws at five years old or running forklifts when we didn't have a license, all that fun stuff. But, but the, the, the highlight of, of going to the grandparents' warehouse was, was that they had a dog. And this just wasn't any kind of dog. This was a Doberman Pinscher. Now, we didn't grow up with animals. Uh, we still don't have animals. My kids want animals, but we refuse to have another child in the home. And so no animals as of now. You can pray for them because they really want them, but, but the answer is no for now. But, but my grandparents had this amazing Doberman Pinscher. I mean, he was scary. Teeth, fangs, and, and he had a very peculiar name because when he would look at you, he looked sad. Uh, but then when the people got too close to the fence to try to break in, he would look mad, right? So his name was Sad Sack. <laughs> and so Sad Sack seemed sad until the bad guy tried to get in the fence and then he got real mad and he would be vicious and growling and, and he was strong. He, he was a big dog and I remember as a kid going, wow, Sad Sack is bigger than life. And I'll never forget, Sad Sack was chained up in the warehouse outside to his like dog house where he kind of had his domain. Someone was trying to break in and I was there just hanging out into the fence and and so Sadsack did what he did. He began to guard the stuff. And he moved so powerfully, the chain that was attached to his doghouse, which is probably now thinking about it, four to five feet, I mean, it's big. He drugged that thing across the yard to the fence and scared the you know what out of the guy trying to mess with the fence. Now, I don't know if he was trying to break in, it might've been the postman, but nonetheless, I remember thinking, whoa, this dog, this Doberman pincher, who seems nice, and I'll be honest, he will lick your face and love you to the day is over. But if he didn't know you, you were gonna be lunch. And, uh, and another time, I remember again, uh, we were out and we had, there was like tables in the back of the yard and we would go out there and sit with my grandparents and have lunch. And, and again, Sazak was kind of chained up and hanging out, and, but he, this time it was to the bench. And again, someone came up, it might have been the postman again, uh, but he thought he was breaking it and he would move so powerfully that he actually would drag the bench with him across the yard, hitting things and moving it. And I remember thinking as a kid, wow, this kid, this, this dog is strong. And, and I, I actually, now growing up, I'm just glad he loved me, right? <laughs> like if you're afraid of dogs, this was the dog you'd be afraid of. But, but here's the thing, when, when he was leashed up, he was connected to that thing, but he was, it was so powerful, his force, he would drag the thing he was leashed to across the yard, it would hit things, whether it was a bench or his doghouse, and he would hit items and, and cause some destruction. Now obviously we loved him, and my grandparents loved him, so we kept, they kept him around. But, but our topic today, I want you to think about that story because this is a beautiful and tragic picture of how a lot of Christians function when it comes to forgiveness. Because we are still leashed to the things we haven't forgiven, we carry that around with us like Sad Sack did across our life, hitting things with it, destroying stuff with it as we move around life because we haven't unleashed forgiveness to the people or persons that have hurt us. So the question for us today as we think about the word forgiveness, as we think about how this functions, like, like what are you still leashed to? Like what are you still connected to that you haven't forgiven? Just like that powerful Doberman pincher, sad sack, would drag it across the yard. Maybe for you it's an, an ex-spouse. Maybe for you it's a relationship. Maybe for you it's a parent. Maybe for you it's a child. Maybe for you it's a coworker or, or a friend or a boss. Maybe it's the stranger on the street. Maybe it's the person you thought was a safe person growing up but did things that hurt you deeply, physically, spiritually, emotionally. And for some reason, you haven't discovered freedom yet and so your life is still leashed to that hurt, to that unforgiveness. And my prayer for you today is that you would unhook, unleash from that person that hurts you 
by living in such a way where you can offer and give forgiveness to them. Because here's the truth, if you thought about your life and you're thinking about that person now, God wants you to be free. God doesn't want you to drag that hurt, that unforgiveness into the next relationship. God doesn't want you to drag that offense, that hurt, that bitterness, that, that negativity into the next relationship. And so as you think about forgiveness today, my prayer is that you would experience freedom as we talk about the biblical truths on how we could actually live free and find forgiveness. Look what it says in Matthew 6, 15. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. Okay, whoa, this is a serious scripture. Are you saying like we, we're, not, we're not saved, we're not rescued if we, if we don't forgive others? Well, here's what it, I want you to understand about this. Like when we refuse to forgive others, what we're saying is actually we don't understand what, what God through Christ has done for us. And so it's, it's meant to make a point. So, so today, you need to understand that unforgiveness hinders things in your life from happening. And so when we refuse to forgive others, what we're saying is we don't actually understand, maybe we haven't grasped, or actually the better truth is maybe we haven't uh, received, maybe we haven't experienced here and now the real forgiveness of our sins. Because had we, the Bible's declaring to us that we would actually offer it to everyone and anyone. And so it's important for us to realize that there are, there are things that unforgiveness hinders in our life, and the first one is, is fellowship. Fellowship with God. That actually by refusing to forgive others, what we're saying is we don't actually understand the forgiveness that we received from, from God. We don't understand that, that Christ went first so that we could experience forgiveness. Christ died and rose again so that we could know forgiveness of our sin. And because we've experienced that, we are now responsible for offering that freely to other people. And when we don't, we're, we're saying, oh, actually, the unforgiveness in my life is hindering fellowship with God. And that's a big deal. It also hinders our worship. Hinders our worship, like, because here's the thing, when you've been forgiven, you are free to experience all that God has for you. But when you're harboring unforgiveness, it affects how you see God, it affects how you see life, it affects how you work, and the Bible declares, it's not in your notes, but it says this, do everything as unto the Lord, as a what, an act of worship? And so when you're harboring unforgiveness, it affects every area of your life, including your worship. You know what else it affects? Your generosity. Because the ultimate generous act is God giving us Jesus. And if we basically go, you know what? I can't forgive others because we haven't really experienced the forgiveness of God. What we're saying is I actually can't gift that to anyone, which is basically hindering the very thing that God gave us is to a generous act of love, unfailing, uh, uh, and so it hinders our love for people when we harbor unforgiveness towards them. Now, now let me just say this up front because I know a lot of people probably watching there are already like, well, so what? I've heard this talk before. What you want us to do is just forget like it never happened. Well, we're gonna address that in just a little bit, but that's not what we're asking you to do. And so what you're gonna see today is actually some biblical principles and truths, which isn't asking you to forget, but it is asking you to function in a biblical way when it comes to people who hurt you, offended you, uh, wronged you, uh, despised you, uh, talked bad about you, and it caused pain. And if we don't deal with that, it, it moves into unforgiveness, which again, hinders a lot of things in life, a lot of really important things, fellowship with God, worship, our generosity, our love. Look what Colossians 3 says, powerful scripture. Make an allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Now, I wish it just said forgive like the people you really like. <laughs> forgive your spouse, right? Like, okay, we could make that work, but no, forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. That's an imperative, that's, a, that's a, like a commandment. You must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Now, isn't it interesting? I, I have to just talk about this word bind, because when you experience God's love, it, it binds us together in unity, in peace, in love, but, but when you 
when you live with unforgiveness, it also binds you together with that person, but not in unity or peace or love. Like, when you got divorced, and maybe you experienced someone cheating on you when you were married, and you haven't forgiven that person, I'm not asking you to forget it, but I, when you haven't forgiven them, you know what's happened? You're still bound together. Not by love, not by unity, but by unforgiveness, which ultimately can destroy your life, which is exactly what the thief wants to do. Kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus, remember, says, I, I have a different plan. A plan for you to be bound together with love. And so when you offer unforgiveness, Forgiveness to the unforgivable, supposedly, you're actually loosing yourself from that individual and you can go into the next relationship with unity, peace, and love. And so it's important for us to realize that, that, that there's, a, there's an operation, there's a principle, there's a truth to live out, and it's that the Lord forgave us, and so we are to forgive others. Here, here's what real forgiveness looks like, and I wrote it down so that you can see it clearly. Real forgiveness goes beyond our three-dimensional world. This message of forgiveness takes us into the unseen dimension where God's supernatural forgiveness towards us gives us the power to extend unending forgiveness to others. Now I know there's pushback already going, but you don't know what they did, and you're right. I, I don't know what they did but I do know that the Bible transcends what we've gone through and how we feel and what we've experienced. And so as, as Christians who are pursuing Christ every day of our life, we are, we are to anchor our life to God's word. And so real forgiveness, according to scripture, it goes beyond what we can see in the natural. It's actually a supernatural power through Jesus' forgiveness of us by giving up his life, and because we received it by grace through faith, we now can actually offer that same forgiveness to those who royally hurt us, and despised us, and wounded us, and left us in our time of need. It caused great pain, discomfort, some of which we, if we were really honest, we can bring it up like that, and it's like it happened yesterday when it actually happened years ago. So the, the good news today is that when we, when we move from unforgiveness to forgiveness, it unleashes benefits in our life. Benefits that will blow your mind that I'm gonna give you in just a moment, but benefits of forgiveness for you as an individual that I want you to experience. Remember the whole goal of this series is not that you would continue to fake life, but, but allow the Spirit of God to fix it. And so again, it's not about forgetting. The real miracle of forgiveness is this, not forgetting, it's remembering, but choosing to forgive anyways. That's the ultimate supernatural part here, that you don't have to forget it, but the miracle is that you may remember it, but you choose to forgive anyways. Why, because God forgave you. Your transgressions, your propensity to move away from God versus towards God. There are benefits for you and me as we offer forgiveness because we freely received it. And when you don't, remember I already talked about the things that are hindered, fellowship, worship, generosity, love, it's all affected by what? Unforgiveness. But when we, when we act like God wants us to, and we offer it freely to anyone with unending amounts of it, there are some benefits, and here's the first one. Emotionally, we are benefited from forgiveness. Job 5.2 says it this way. Surely, resentment destroys the fool, and jealousy kills the simple. That word resent means to think again. To think again. To, to rehearse it over and over and over and over. And so a lot of us today watching we have unforgiveness towards someone who hurt us deeply. And, and this resentment is the beautiful but tragic picture of that relationship. You rehearse it over and over and over and over again. You think about it, you think about it. You, and here's the thing, in the moment it feels right. But if we looked at our life and lined it up with the word of God, the scriptures, the Bible, here's what is the truth, unforgiveness it overpromises and always under delivers. 
I know it feels like holding that against him is the right thing to do because it feels right. But the reality is, is that unforgiveness under delivers every single time because unforgiveness hinders a lot of very important things in our life. There are studies done about people with unforgiveness and what they found is actually a negative person. If you really drill down, if you peel back the layers of their life as an onion, what you'll find is there's often unforgiveness. Because it feels like, oh, they're just negative. But the reality is negativity is just the root of someone who's harboring, what, unforgiveness. And so they're emotionally compromised. Why, because they have allowed their emotions to be robbed because of unforgiveness. But when we offer forgiveness, we have a benefit that our emotions get checked and aligned with God's word and we become a healthy person. We stop resenting, we stop being destroyed, we stop playing the fool. It, it no longer is about the hurt, it's about Christ and receiving and then giving. And we kill unforgiveness in its tracks so that we can be healthy emotionally. Another benefit of, of forgiveness is relational benefit. Look what it says in Ephesians 4.32. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. I call this preemptive forgiveness. Think about Jesus. At our worst, God gave us his best in Jesus. When we couldn't earn it, couldn't, couldn't deserve or didn't deserve it, God gave us Jesus. Why? So that we could know our creator forever, so that we could experience forgiveness, shame and guilt broken off our life. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. If you're not a Christian, here's the good news. You're, you're, you're dead in your sin. You're not a bad person that's made good. You're dead in your sin. Jesus came to make you alive in Christ so that you could know God forever and you could experience the fullness of life here and now. That's the good news. Okay, and so there's the relational peace that Jesus came preemptively to offer forgiveness. He's the initiator. And so because Christ preemptively offered forgiveness, I love to take that in my own life and preemptively offer forgiveness when no one asks for it. Because here's the truth, they may never ask for it. And so as Christians, we preemptively forgive others. Because it says, be, be tender hearted. Be kind, forgiving one another, just as what God through Christ has forgiven you. And so he preemptively forgave us when we didn't earn it and couldn't deserve it. And so he gave it to us and so we do the same thing in return to others. We preemptively forgive. My, my mentor growing up used to say, the first one to ask forgiveness wins. And that's what he was saying. Be kind to each other. Ten order forgiving one another. The first person to ask forgiveness wins. Now here's the truth about forgiveness. This is not forgiveness with your spouse. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry you were hurt. I'm sorry. Like th th That will get you on the couch. Uh, here's real forgiveness. I'm sorry, fill in the blank, will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? Whenever our kids uh, do something that hurts one another, we, we tell them, hey, by the way, come on. L let's make it right. And they'll go, I'm sorry. No, we're like, that's not how it works. That's not Bible. And so they'll look at each other, go, I'm sorry. And then they'll say the words, will you forgive me? And then the, we make the other child go, I will forgive you. And then we make them hug and, and kiss and, 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 you know. But here's the, I noticed a difference when it was just, I'm sorry. It was a, a have to. But when it was like, will you forgive me? Then it's a decision of the will, a decision of the heart. And then the other person reciprocates. Now here's the truth, you may never get reciprocated. But because Christ preemptively forgave us, I think the benefit of forgiveness is that we can preemptively forgive others and it can restore relational issues with people. Here's the third one, physically. There's a benefit for our physical body when we forgive people. Look what it says in Proverbs 14, 30. A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Now here's the awesome truth. There are studies scientific studies, one that actually just came out of Stanford, studying people, and I don't know how they asked the questions, but the study goes like this, people who harbored unforgiveness were more sick, chronic fatigue, heart, blood pressure issues, back pains, pains in their bones, 
Could it be that actually there is a benefit, and now they say there is, to forgiving people, to walking in life with peace? How do you have peace? By offering forgiveness, because a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Could it be, and maybe it's not you, maybe it's the person watching that needs this, but maybe it could be you, that actually you're physically sick in your body, consistently and chronically, because you have unforgiveness that you have not let go of. Some of you watching today, you have experienced pain, physical pain. And I want to challenge you today. As we continue to go through this talk, and at the end of this talk, I want to lead you in a prayer. But in that prayer, I want you to say the people that now you're unleashing from because you're going to forgive them. And I believe this, as you do, you're going to experience a physical health in your body you have not yet known. Another benefit of forgiveness is spiritually we're, we're, we're benefited from forgiveness. Look what it says in Mark 11. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against, so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. What is the scripture telling? Hey, l- listen, there's a pathway to heaven. There's a pick up the phone and dial to heaven. And, but, but, but when you walk with unforgiveness, that line is disconnected. Unforgiveness, remember, over promises and under delivers. Call failed. Come on, have you ever used your phone and you didn't have a service? I was recently out with a friend and we were out in a remote area and I was trying to use my phone and it just kept saying, call failed, call failed, call failed, call failed. And for some of us Christians, we feel like, oh man, God is not speaking to me. Our prayers aren't being answered. And and I'm not saying in all cases, but could it be a case of we are harboring a grudge and unforgiveness and so our call keeps failing because the line is disconnected. Because God's like, hey, I forgave you. You've experienced this, Christian. You've experienced my great, unending, no strings attached love through the person of Jesus. Now, 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 now give that away to other people. Let them experience my love through your forgiveness. Unleash yourself from that hurt. Unleash yourself from that experience. Unleash yourself from that person. Unleash yourself from that moment that memory, not that you have to forget it, because remember, the real miracle is that you might remember it, but you offer forgiveness anyways. It's not to diminish what you've been through, because we've all been hurt, we all have wounds, but it's not God's plan for you to stay wounded the rest of your life. Find some freedom, offer forgiveness, because you've received forgiveness. And you'll experience emotional health and relational health, physical health, and you'll grow spiritually. You'll be closer to God. Pastor Brian, are you saying that if I offer forgiveness to people I haven't forgiven, that I'll hear from God clearer? Yes, that's what I'm telling you. That's exactly what I'm telling you. And you can stop faking it by coming to church all the time and writing about how you have a great devotional life, but inside, you're harboring a grudge. Inside, you're a negative person. And you try to hide it, and you try to fabricate it, and you keep faking it, but eventually, friends, it's gonna be revealed. Let God, his spirit at work, fix it by, by freely offering forgiveness. And what happens? It's just like Sad Sack, that Doberman. When, it, when we took off the leash, he was free to roam without causing any damage to anything or anyone. That's God's best for you. And so how do we do that? How do we make forgiveness work? I'm gonna give you a couple thoughts as we wrap up today's talk. And the first is is that you have to defer to God. If you wanna make forgiveness work for you, you have to defer to God. Look what it says in John 20. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And so after he said this, he says, hey, by the way, if you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. And so let me give you some context. Jesus had just risen from the dead. His disciples were waiting in the room, all huddled together. He shows up in the resurrection form, and he says, hey, by the way, receive the Holy Spirit. And And then he talks about forgiven. So we can see that, again, that preemptive forgiveness at work The Holy Spirit at work empowering, because remember, real forgiveness means that you're not just here in this dimension, it's a supernatural empowerment of the Spirit of God to offer what your humanness does not want to. Because in our humanness, we want to hold on to that hurt, we want to snuggle with our struggle, we want to continue to harbor that grudge because it feels right. But thank God we don't live by how we feel, we live by faith. If you're a Christian, You are not obligated to 
to have every whim of your feelings dictate and direct your life. We are obligated to live by faith, which means that we need to have the Spirit of God breathe on us again so that what? We can offer what we've received. So, and so you defer to God. God, whatever you say, I'm gonna do. And so God says, hey, hey, you've received, now whew, give. So we defer to God. We defer to God. Number two, we decide to take the initiative. Because remember, Jesus took the initiative, and so as we represent Christ everywhere we go, we now take the initiative. We preemptively offer forgiveness to other people. That's how we make forgiveness work. And so you may never hear from them, but they hear from you. You may never realize and actually have real relationship like you thought you would have again, but guess what, you're walking in freedom. And they may never, but it's not about them, it's about you. It's not about them, it's about you. Forgiveness is most likely the greatest gift, not to the person, but to you. Because unforgiveness hinders you. They're not thinking about you. But when you offer forgiveness, you get the greatest gift. Freedom. Freedom, relationally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. You can worship freely. You can be generous freely. You can love freely. You can have fellowship freely when, when unforgiveness is a, not a part of your story. Look at Romans 12, eight says, if your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take, here it is, the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly, take initiative. Decide. And that's where, that's where the real leadership comes into play. Forgiveness is a choice. You may never feel like it. Often, can I just be honest? Often I don't feel like offering forgiveness to those who've hurt me. Often if I was really honest, I think about how I could get back at them. I feel like, man, it would be nice for them to hurt like they hurt me. Yet as spiritual people, as people are pursuing Christ to grow in our faith, to not live by our feelings, to, to lead well, to give generously, to be encouraging, to be kind, we must make a decision, a preemptive decision, that no one at any time, no matter what happens, is going to make my life live in a prison of unforgiveness. I choose this day whom I will serve. And by serving God, I've received forgiveness. And by receiving forgiveness, I now gift it everywhere that I go and to everyone and anyone that hurts me. Remember, the supernatural part of this is not that you have to forget, but that you might remember, but you forgive anyways. Second Corinthians 2, 10 and 11 says this, when you forgive this man, I forgive him too. And when I forgive whatever needs to be forgiven, I do so with Christ's authority for your benefit. So that Satan, here it is, will not outsmart us. For we are familiar with his evil schemes. Remember, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus, I'm gonna give you a rich and satisfying life. Here's what it looks like. Don't let the Satan outsmart you by harboring a grudge and offense and hurt and unforgiveness because that's how he gets you to have your life destroyed and discouraged and frustrated and negative. Come on, some of you negative people today, I'm telling you, if you will just ask God, hey, who in my life do I need to forgive? At the end of this talk, you will experience physical health, spiritual health, relational health, and you will stop having what I call emotional flooding, especially on social media. You will experience the stability in your life because you have gifted those that need it, whether they know it or not. Remember, the greatest gift of forgiveness is not for the person who's being forgiven, it's for you, the forgiver. And so we make a decision of the heart and the will to initiate, it's your choice. It's your choice. And so you will have a choice. You now know what the Bible says, you'll have a choice to forgive or to continue to harbor and snuggle and embrace unforgiveness. But, but now you know the effects. It's gonna hinder some things in your life. Now you know the results of what happens when you offer forgiveness instead of holding on to unforgiveness. Which ultimately, if you wanna make forgiveness work for you, you have to disengage from your emotions, which we've kinda hit 
a little bit today, but I want you to see it in scripture, Galatians 5, 22. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Now listen, there's a whole list, but the highlight of the list that I wanna give you is, is this, self-control. Uh, the Holy Spirit's gonna produce this kind of character qualities, this fruit, as the Bible calls it, and one of them is, is self-control, which, which allows you to remember, but choosing to forgive anyways. It allows you to not let the emotions of life, your feelings, direct and dictate who gets forgiven and who doesn't. Look what Isaiah 43 and 25 says, powerful scripture, I, yes, I alone, will blot out your sins for my own sake and will never think of them again. Woo! So when God looks at you and you're a Christian, you've placed your life in the hands of Jesus, you've experienced his rescue, his redemption, forgiveness of sin. When he looks at you, he sees Jesus' finished work. He doesn't see your sins. He, it's been blotted out, it's been forgiven, it's been pardoned. And, and so it's, it is with this knowledge and understanding, not just in our head, but experiencing in our heart, where we give this to others, and we disengage from the emotions, and we choose to forgive even when we remember what happened. Because ultimately, here's the, here's the real freedom, and this is gonna help some of you the most. You have to deliver your enemies to God. Like, wait, wait, what? say that again, because I wanna hear you actually. Deliver your enemies to God. That means you don't get to judge. You don't get to hold them accountable. God does all that. You, you, you turn them over to God when you offer forgiveness that they don't deserve, but because you've received when you didn't deserve, when you offer unforgiv- or forgiveness to the unforgivable person in your life, you're, you're acting like Jesus. Look what it says in Luke 6. But to who you are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. Offer love. What is love? The greatest love is forgiveness. Unleashing your life and heart from that hurt so that you can stop doing damage in every other area of your life because you keep dragging those people, those experiences, those memories, those hurts, just like that Doberman pincher at my grandparents who would destroy stuff if he was chained up, but when we unleashed him, he was free to roam and he would lick your face all day long. Why some of you today, if you'll just unleash yourself from those people who hurt you, who, who despised you, who talked bad about you, that you can recall like if it happened yesterday, even though it was 20 years ago, or 10 years ago, or last month, or last night, if you'll just unleash your life by offering forgiveness, instead of harboring a grudge and unforgiveness, you will experience freedom today. And that's my prayer for you. That's God's best for you. So as I wrap up this talk, I wanna pray. I wanna pray that the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit who raised Christ from the dead, would pinpoint the people that we've been attached to, that we've, we've leashed ourselves to because of unforgiveness. Would you join me in a prayer? God, we thank you for every single person watching. I pray in this moment now, you'd pinpoint the people that we have not forgiven. And if we're a follower of Christ today, we would take a moment, even now, and say their name. Lord, I forgive, you fill in the blank. Come on, maybe it's a list. Maybe you take a moment after this, but I pray right now as you make that list, you'll find physical health in your body. You'll find spiritual growth and excitement a part of your everyday story going forward. You'll experience relational health. You'll experience relational health not only with others, but with God. You'll experience your best life now. Forgiveness offered freely because you've received. If you're watching today and you're not a Christian, I'd like to lead you in a prayer. You can't forgive others until you've first been forgiven. And so today is your moment to say yes to following Jesus for the first time or the first time in a long time. And what you need to experience before you can be f- forgive others is forgiveness for yourself. The Bible says that we've all fallen short of God's glorious standard, which means we're sinners. And because of sin, it separated us from God, our creator. Jesus came to fill that gap and take our place. And because of his finished work, we can have a relationship with God, our creator, forever and experience his presence here and now. 
And so if you're ready to make that decision, I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. You pray right right, no matter who's watching or who you're with. Today, Jesus, I'm choosing to follow you. Today, Jesus, I'm choosing to receive you as Lord, leader, and savior of my life. Take my life and transform it, make it new. Forgive me, take the shame and guilt off my life. From this day forward, I am yours, and you are my Lord. In your name we pray, Jesus, amen. If you pray that prayer, if you'd like us to come alongside and walk out that decision with you, we'd love to do that. Would you look for the link, sign up to be in a group, get water baptized, join us for a service in person as you are in the area. We'd love to host you, your family, your kids. Join us again for summer kickoff on June 12th, Father's Day on June 19th, it's gonna be incredible. As we wrap up today's time together, I wanna encourage you to prayerfully consider partnering with us financially. As you give today, your giving is making an eternal difference in the lives of people. So thank you so much for your generosity. And as always, Rock Creek, you're doing better than you think. God bless.